Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Radically Loved podcast. I am joined by a very special guest today. Uh, she's somebody who I admire on a deep and soul level. I've known her for many years now and have been following for work for have been following her work for a very long time. And I've been wanting to get her on the podcast, and we've kind of played around with scheduling, and we finally made it happen. So I'm really excited to introduce you all to Octavia Rahim. She is, uh, she's a teacher. She's an author. She is a prolific speaker in the world of wellness and spirituality. And I'm, I I have to say, and I'm going to say this before we even start, going to Octavia's class during, uh, the Live Be Yoga tour, which is where mm. I met her for the first time in Atlanta, was there's only been one other time where I felt what I felt when I went to her class. And I never felt so at home in a space, in a container, and in my own body. And that was such a, a such a deep gift to receive from somebody who I just met. And that to me just spoke to your level of realness, your level of groundedness, your level Mm -hmm. of wholehearted living. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Like I felt, I felt that deeply. Thank you so much, Rosie. I don't know that I knew that you had that experience at the studio. You know, it's, I think right after, you know, right after that. So it was during that week, I think we're just in, in the time of the tour, it, it may have been like halfway into it, but I think it was just kind of like me personally, I was experiencing being homesick for the first time, Uh, you uh, know, I I hadn't been home in like a couple of months and Mm. I was just really feeling homesick. And I was up until that point, uh, I was a little bit uh, disappointed by the state of the yoga community Mm. at, at that point to some of the studios that we had visited and just the energy, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it just kind of felt like, oh my God, that's, I thought this was going to be epic and it's really disappointing. <laughs> kind you know of like I'm more, saying? more and more of the same, more Did, and yeah, more of the same. Yeah. yeah. And, and so finally getting to, um, Sacred Chill West, mm-hmm. uh, I was, you know, we got there and it was like the minute that you started speaking. And, you know, the sound, the background, and just the the level of warmth and interconnectedness. That is what is what you would want to feel in a yoga studio. That was the first time there was a real sense of, oh, this is a community. That this is like a real community. Mm. Like the people here really care for each other. Like this feels like home. This feels welcoming. This feels inviting. And... Mm. It feels like everything that any spiritual practice should feel like. And so I think it was just that perfect moment of going into the space and having you just speak and share a a, a poignant experience at that mm. point just felt very much like, oh, like, thank you for seeing me and thank you for validating my human experience and thank you for making me feel like I'm home Mm. you know Hmm. yeah thank you no thank you that's you know and and I don't I don't have that studio anymore and when me and um my friend and business partner Merle yeah in 2020 decided we needed to close or end that kind of physical space. What we were very clear on is that, um, you know, Dr. King uses the language of beloved community and that the beloved community is really a community of heart and spirit. 
and my my hope. And so it's interesting to hear you say this because what I hear is that the essence of that space continues. You know, you are carrying the energy of it with you till this day. And I'm like, that's as a teacher, as a writer, as a person creating in the world, you know, like even with like the books I write or anything I even share on social media, my hope is that um, it, it touches into the heart in some way yeah. and that that you can carry that forward. But I also want to honor that, um, you know, like we're space holders, you're a teacher too, and I also feel like the home you felt is the home you brought too. Oh. You know, like there's uh, there's a, such a fluid and kind of back and forth relationship, yeah. dynamic play between teacher and student. And um, owning a brick and mortar yoga studio really, really taught me that. Like a lot of what people would say they felt when they walked into mm-hmm. the door, mm-hmm. I always would just reaffirm, well, you brought that with you too, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? You yeah. know, and, and then just honoring that, like I come from, you know, I come from people who've been deeply marginalized. And for me, I was like, there is like no way in hell I'm going to have a physical place and people walk through the door and feel like they can't be here, don't belong here, don't have the right outfit, don't have the right body. Because yeah. I'm like, I walk through the world and have experiences where I feel like I'm not right <laughs> and yeah. therefore not welcome, you know. And so in this one way, um, you know, it's like taking my, my the wound is where the light enters, right, you know, in this yeah. one sense. And the the wound of um, being marginalized and experiencing racism or feeling like yoga wasn't for me or people like me, I kind of turned that into like in in the way I teach in my teachings is that, and I try to deconstruct it sometimes. Like, what am I exactly doing to create yes. the sense of belonging? But what I know I am not going to do is, you know. Do do if consciously do things to make people feel like they don't belong and they are not welcome in into the practice, you know. Um, And even as a studio owner, I had, you know, front desk team and I said, no matter what is happening, the minute that door opens, you look at the person and you say, hello, welcome. That's, you know, some of these things are so yeah. basic. And I'm like, but why are we not, why are we out here not doing that? Yes. <laughs> you know? Well, that's so interesting that you're saying that, Octavia, because you would be surprised, maybe not surprised, at how many mm-hmm. times that doesn't happen when you're entering a space. I mean, there were some not unpleasant situations, you know, that that we experienced, you know, that I experienced going into some of the studios. Uh, I went to one particular studio that thought I was delivering something. And Mm. I was like, no, I'm Mm. here to take class. I'm actually here with the magazine to Mm. write about the studio. Um, Mm. But no, I'm so it's like, okay, oh, now I can pay attention to you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I, I mean, look, you know, I grew up in East L.A. Like, I understand the dynamics of going into places and being judged or or mm. f- feeling unwelcome. And so mm. I really, you know, I find that people that have had that experience perhaps have a different foresight with mm acceptance and being more open and and understanding, oh, I've lived this. So I know how to expand my energy so that everybody feels welcome, Mm. you know? So I, I really, I don't know. I think that there's something to that where Mm. every, where you can create a space of like, oh, because you didn't welcome me in now I'm going to marginalize you. It's like, Mm. no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I am just going to create a space and an experience for everybody to be seen. Mm. And and I really do love what you just said about bringing that part of home with you, because I think that we forget that those experiences 
are already in us, right? Mm. And certain people um, like yourself and, and in your writing. And I, I really feel that in your writing, speci- your writing specifically, um, certain people help you bring that out or help mm. you remember, you know, that recognition mm. or that remembrance of who I am or what I'm doing, especially during a troubled time. I mean, I was really, you know, I have my notifications for you on you and (laughs) Tracy Stanley and two of my other friends are the only notifications I have turned on, on social media, because I'm like, I know that whatever is posted here is coming from a deep place, a place of honesty and a a place of integrity and i and i want to i want to be with that whatever that may be and i really leaned on that especially during this time and so you know you are here because we want to have a conversation about your your new book that you just wrote <laughs> pause rest and be um and i it, stillness practices for courage in times of change i wanted to get that right so i wanted to read it yes but I was so I'm like, yes, finally I have like an entire catalog of 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 content that I can read without having to look, without having to get on my phone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um so I I'm curious for you, like this last, you know, these last two years has been really intense for a lot of people in in many different ways. Um so I want to know what what inspired you to create this book specifically, this invitation to, as the first thing that you said when I asked you, when when I when we logged on, I said, "How how are you?" And you said, "I'm present." <laughs> and we started we started laughing. I'm, pre- I'm present. I'm here, which is a whole way of being, right? But I, the other thing I said was. I feel like in this moment that we are traversing through that. Um, how are you? Is such a profound question. Yes, it's a worthy question. You know, it's a worthy question to ask about ourselves and and each other. And um, but ultimately, I come back to I'm present. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> probably you can feel the dot 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 all the things. Yes. In that. Um, but this book, so I started writing this book in June 2020. Yeah, you know, and um, wanting to, and I want to pause with that and honor the moment that it was and the loss of George Floyd. Mm-hmm. And um, when I started writing this book, I remember thinking I want to write something for me and I want to write something for us, <laughs> you know, and I had the sense um, even in June 2020 that whatever this is we're in was extended like it wasn't and we're just going to be over it because I, I remember thinking even if by the end of 2020 we're done, there's no pandemic the reverberations of it will be felt for so long. Um, But now here we are two years in and we are now realizing there are so many waves to this. It's a spiral, it's up, down, crash, boom. And and so a part of my practice also is, I'll call it deep listening, right? So I do, I practice asana, I do poses. I love that too, I love movement. And when I want to, like hear a true deep word, I get really still. And, you know, I didn't start by going simply, what do I want to write from like this kind of little mind? I was like, what needs to be said? What needs to be spoken into this moment? And this is, and this book is essentially what I heard <laughs> from that moment wow. of here's what, what to share. Um, and so the book is divided into three sections, endings, which I start with, yes. with which is a curious choice, uh-huh. maybe for some, um, the liminal or the space in between. And then I end the book with beginnings. And part of that is, 
again, the moment that I started writing the book in and this profound desire to honor and acknowledge what a lot of times we just kind of like ignore or pretend isn't happening, but shit is ending. Yeah. Things are like, you know, like there are ends with like a period. That's it, you know? Um, and endings can be profoundly uncomfortable and basically, I wanted to start to, to start the book with, okay, let's go there. <laughs> let's turn our being toward how much is truly ending right now. Um, and also just acknowledging the endings that we likely all face some version of an ending that I write about in the book, the end of a relationship, the end of a, a pattern, a thought belief, you know, because what's happening in the world right now, what was definitely happening when I started writing the book is the end of, oh, well, I thought the world was that way. Well, I thought things worked like that. <laughs> I believed this. I thought this about who I am or we are or my country is, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and I also just kind of feel like my practice fortifies me to be able to face endings, but I kind of think collectively we, um, especially when like the end of a way of thinking or when, when you're like, well, I thought this idea, the facades were falling apart. Yes. And I'm like, we, we need to have some kind of courage or relationship with, okay, that's, that's, that is done. Done. <laughs> it's, yeah. done. it's actually yeah. not that way. Right. And it, and it won't be ever again. So um, the book is for us and it's for me, and I hope that it is um, a companion, right? I think when you're navigating times of immense change and uncertainty, it like you can be surrounded by people and feel complete, completely alone. Um, and I've had moments like that in my life where like, I know this maybe sounds weird, where a book has become my companion. I'm like, I, someone is speaking my language. Someone else understands. Someone else knows. And I'm hoping that they're, you know, like, then, then if you're reading the book, you become part of the community of readers and you'll know not just the author, Octavia Rahim wrote, so she understands what I'm going through, mm -hmm. but oh, there's a community of readers who are reading this book and hopefully nodding their head going, yep, I faced that ending. I faced that beginning. I was in that murky place. Um, I am not alone. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. There's um I'm I'm actually curious what your writing process was like mm. for this. I love talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> so the book is called Pause Rest B. And you used the word integrity when you talked about reading the things I share even on mm -hmm. social media right and one of my teachers is Tracy Stanley who she is a woman of you know profound depth and yes. integrity you're gonna get the real yeah exactly. <laughs> and the true and the truth from her and <clears throat> and so in the spirit of you know I'm using these words pause rest be I'm not just using the words like it is to, to be in integrity for me means to in embody thirst to the best of my human ability. I'm not perfect, right? You know, and so part of my, my writing process, I did not write this book from this kind of intellectual brain, though I'm hyper cerebral. But the level of heartfulness that I wanted to be present in this creative work, I knew that I needed to move the energy down and then be having a way to access where deeper wisdom lives, I believe, which is anahata of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so my writing process literally was like rest, journal, <laughs> and then look back at the journals because journaling is just kind of stream of consciousness and see what is there to pull out and then have, you know, this structured time to now I'm going to go back and make this make some meaning. But resting was an essential part of my creative process and resting in particular in the practices of yoga nidra, restorative yoga, and then meditation, right? It's like, I feel like I, I didn't so much as write this book, but I heard it. Mm. And to to hear we must you, know, you gotta get quiet you yeah. can't be out here turning up yes. I love that too right <laughs> but you have to have a way to like come inside and listen and and then bring forward what what you hear 
Um, and so like I want to, you know, like I mentor yoga teachers sometimes and I'm, I, I've ended up having a few mentees who are really interested in publishing a book. And sometimes when I tell them, like, I rest and then I write, I rest and then I write, I really trust that place that I can go into that is beyond like front brain when I, you know, practice these kinds of yogas that I do. Like, and when I do people, like, I want to tell some people some other fancy process. I'm like, no, nah, I just rested and I wrote what I heard. <laughs> Like the end. <laughs> and of course, like to be clear, you know, like there are so many pass throughs. Like I think what you read was like for you know, like there were so many pass throughs. So much, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like before I even sent it to Shambhala, I worked with a like a a freelance and private editor. You know, like yeah. layers to the process. Yes, I did too. But getting it down on paper, the essence of it was I had I had to listen for it. And then write what I heard and and really trust what I was hearing. And not even some of it, I didn't even like the middle of the book is the liminal space. And I literally just like said like that, that middle part of my book is like, as I rested and heard it, like I didn't, like if my editors didn't edit it, it's like, that is how it came out. And, um, Let's call that grace, right? Tracy Stanley yes. says sometimes like grace descends upon you. But I think you guys, sometimes you have to stop. You can't chase grace. Sometimes you got to stand still enough for it to find you. And so I rested and it did. And it yes. I, I think that's one of the biggest ailing factors in our society right now is that we're, mm. we're so out of practice of... Mm being still and just resting or just being bored, right? <laughs> We're, we want we want to consistently fill the space, fill the void mm-hmm. with content and mm-hmm. seeing or taking in or reading or, oh, I'm, I have some free time. I'm going to go watch some TV or I'm going to look at this article. It's just like... That. It's too much. Too, yeah. It's too much. Like it overloads the nervous system. Right? It's really too much. Like I, we're designed, we're resilient, right? We can bounce back and stuff, but I'm like, I just don't think we're designed to move at the speed of the light of social media. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and I'm like, what? you know, like everything we take in, through the eyes, through the ears, this conversation, everything has to be processed and digested. And if you just are like, I think about it with eating, the way we consume content, yes. like, oh, I just, just don't, can't stop, don't stop. Like, okay, and now, and this is kind of a tangent, but to the point we can consume so much content that we aren't having our own thoughts, right? Like we're repeating things and we go, well, I don't did I say that? Did Rosie say that? Did I take, where is this even coming from? Like we can stop unknowing the origin of the words that we're using. Um, I've even had that experience. And for me, when that happens, I go, it is time to log off. When I am like, who is thinking me? <laughs> who is thinking me? Am I thinking me? Um, but I think it takes, Danielle Laporte says this, it takes courage to be still. Yes. And I'm like, we we oftentimes, I think it takes courage to make specific moves in the world too. And because both can be true at the same time, it takes courage to be still. And and why it takes courage to be still, because the truth will find you when you're just sitting there, you know? And a lot of us define ourselves by like what we can do and what we can and have had to, right? By what we can produce and all of those things and being still is asking us for nothing. And then you have to start to contend with, we have to start to contend with, well, who and what am I when I'm not doing all the things, when I'm not producing? Um, I think about this even in like intimate relationship when I can't do all those things for you, am I still worthy? You have to start asking those questions when you're just being, being, right? And for me, the answer I come to again and again, the more I practice it is, of course, you are, sweetheart. Like, you know, this like, um, I love in your title for your new book, Radical Self Love. Yeah. You you know, and for me, one way I practice that is like just 
being, like being still with myself, just being on a walk with myself, letting myself not have to do something is a way to love myself as I am. Like I'm not only lovable because I can write and or I can speak or I can teach you something or I can hold space. Or I could be his wife or I could be his mother. Like I am lovable because I am. But, but how do you actually practice that? <laughs> yeah. You know? For me, it's in the stillness. It's in the not doing that I get to see more of my actual essence. That's so beautiful. Do you see everybody that's listening? I mean, come on. <laughs> Let's get into this. What what would be what would you like your readers to leave with after reading this book? Mm, that's such a good, I think that's such a good question. Mm. I want them to a get that they come with courage because sometimes we go, I'm not courageous. And I want them through the reading of it and making their own connections through the reading of it and doing the practices in the book, amplify their courage. And courage is simply to live with heart. And so I hope they feel renewed and fortified to face any ending liminal space or beginning with more heart, more of their whole heart. I love that so much. Thank you. So I'm looking up to him like, wow, that goes by way yes. too quickly. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, I am just so grateful for for you. Thank you so much for also, you know, endorsing my book and for helping me I'm so in proud my of you. journey. Ah! Like I like I mean like oh man <laughs> like <gasps> thank you for asking me. Thank you for writing it. Like you I feel like you like dug down yeah, I did. and brought something forward, you know, and um I'm so proud. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. I, I know that this is probably the first of many conversations. I'm so grateful that you are here and that we've been connected for this long. For the people that are listening to this or watching this on YouTube, where can they go for more information and to connect with you? Octavia Rahim. I'm Octavia Rahim everywhere. Like that's my website, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, and pausersb.com is where you can find out about the book. Okay, great. We will put all of those links in the show notes. So if you're watching this, it will be in the description below. And if you're <laughs> listening to if you're listening to this wherever you get your podcasts, it will be included in the show notes. So be sure to support by buying the book. She's got it. This is a books is plural, not singular. So <laughs> please definitely check out all of Octavia's work. Uh, her body of work is definitely life-changing. I, you will not be disappointed. Um, a thousand percent. So I do have one final question and I ask it to all of my guests. And it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast and essentially why I wrote the book. We, because I believe that we are radically loved and radically supported by God, universe, higher power, whatever you believe, whatever your higher highest self is mm -hmm. that the universe works for us and not against us. Mm -hmm. And the question to you is, how do you feel radically loved? Mm, how do I feel radically loved? That's so beautiful. And the first thing that came to my mind is just went walking on this earth. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting answer, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> you know? And I went for a walk in the woods behind my house this morning. And really, I was like, this, this earth is here for, for us and for me. The earth is an expression of radical love. And if God, if we can pay attention to how she is. Yes. And be like that. <laughs> I mean, we truly, we truly can learn so much from nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be my answer. <laughs> okay. No, I, I'll take it. I'm in there with you. I'm tra traversing the woods with you right now in my mind. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. I pray that 
we will have an opportunity in the near future to see each other again in person. Yes. And um, I, I'm excited for you. I'm excited about this book. And I'm I'm so grateful that there are incredible teachers like you mm. walking this earth. Mm. And uh, so thank you so much. And everybody that's listening, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed the podcast, please be sure to share it or share it with somebody who you think would find value in it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts and let us know what you thought. Thank you, Octavia, thank you. so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs>